Okay, here's a quick podcast that will take you through the answers to the factual test about the creation of Germany and the German constitution. Um, some of the uh, questions are very straightforward, um, no dispute at all over the answers. Some of them, um, it required a bit of judgment. Um, I th- think the key thing is when I was marking across the group, I was just uh, making sure I was consistent in the way in which I marked those questions. So let's um, zoom in and uh, work our way through the questions. Um, it'll obviously be helpful if you've got your own answers in front of you just to cross reference. As you can see on this version, the answers are typed in. So, question one In which year was Germany unified? Um, 1871. Um, question two Unification resulted from a war between Prussia and France. Question three um, Sovereignty in the new empire. Um, It obviously resided in the rulers of the state. It did not reside um, in the German people. Sovereignty means the right to rule um, where power lay. Um, With with some of these questions, I'll obviously add a little bit of information in so you get the value from the podcast. Um, Question four, how many German states were there in total, um, including Prussia? There were 25 German states. Question five, um, there were four kings, there were six grand dukes, there were four dukes, and there were eight princes. Um, all of these answers, by the way, um, are in, in the beginning of chapter five from William Carl's book, A History of Germany. Next one, there were three free cities. So three of the states were free cities. Um, Question seven, the ruler of Prussia was obviously um, the king. Uh, Question eight, uh, Berlin was obviously the capital of Prussia and also the capital of the German Empire. Question nine, which one of the following is incorrect? Uh, The one that is not not in that list, um, it was not a responsibility of the imperial government, was education. Question 10, um, the missing word, the imperial government was dependent for its revenue on indirect taxation. Um, Some of you um, put things like um, trade, VAT, Um, I was actually looking for indirect taxation. Um, it, it was the adjective that goes in front of the word taxation, so indirect. Uh, question 11, uh, the constitutional body, also known as the, Fe- as the Federal Council, worthwhile remembering that one, that enshrined the federal basis of the empire, the, uh, the involvement of the leaders of the 25 states in imperial government was the Bundesrat, the upper house that sat alongside the Reichstag. And then that's, uh, the Reichstag is the answer to question 12. Um, uh, the Reichstag represented a concession to the spirit of mass democracy. Um, in other words, allowing the masses to have some involvement in lawmaking. Question 13. One example of the power of the Bundesrat. Um, there were two possible things there. I was reasonably lenient uh, um, and flexible in the way I marked this one. Uh, but precisely, its consent was necessary for all legislation, and uh, secondly, it could veto constitutional change. Number 14, how many seats were there in total in the Bundesrat? There were 58, and of those 58, question 15, Prussia had 17 seats. Which was the second largest state in the Bundesrat? Uh, that was Bavaria. And how many seats did Bavaria have? Bavaria had six seats. That's on the next page. There we go. So Bavaria had six seats. How many votes in the Bundesrat constituted a veto? Um, 14 votes. 14 votes. Um, Number 19, what is the missing word? In practice, the smaller states in the Bundesrat never opposed Prussia on important issues. 
um, 20. Um, give one example of the power of reverse stock. I was only looking for, uh, for one example here. Um, there were actually three specific things here. Um, the first was legislative power, the power to make law, to, the power to approve laws. Okay, so they had that power over lawmaking. Um, secondly, the right to review non-military expenditure. And from 1874, they had the right to review army budgets every seven years. Um, so that was the, that was the uh, the power of the Reichstag. Um, question twenty one: How often were Reichstag elections held? They were held every three years. Question twenty two: Missing word: Karl Liebknecht. Um, you may recognise the name. He was uh, one of the um, the founders, the leaders of the Spartacist movement, which became the Communist Party. Um, that's, that's later on, that's the end of World War I. But he famously described the Reichstag as a fig leaf covering the nakedness of absolutism. So the word fig leaf. So it's obviously a reference there to the fact that the Reichstag appeared to be a, a, allowing democracy, it appeared to be giving power to the people, but in fact it was simply a, a sham. Um, question 23, give one example of the power of the Chancellor. So only, only looking for one example, but there's a bit of a shopping list here. So again, a lot of you didn't get marks because you were just too woolly or too vague in your answer. I was looking for, for something written down very precisely. So learn these. Um, firstly, not obliged to act upon resolutions of the Reichstag. So if the Reichstag made a resolution, um, there, was no, no, um, there was no requirement for the uh, Chancellor to... Um, act on that, in other words, to um, take it to the Reichstag for approval um, for lawmaking. So effectively what that's saying is um, uh, the Reichstag could not initiate laws, only, only the Chancellor could initiate laws. Um, votes of no confidence by the Reichstag could not remove them from office. Appointed by the Emperor and could only be dismissed by the Emperor and was also Minister President of Prussia. Okay, uh, remember that's the senior position in the Prussian cabinet, the minister pres president of Prussia. Remember, the chancellor held, uh, held two powers. Um, quite a lot of you said that <coughs> the, the chancellor um, had the power of going to the Reichstag. I didn't credit that one. Um, that's a right, it is not a power. I may have written that on your answer. Okay, moving into section C. So the Chancellor's power was limited because he was obliged to secure the support of the Reichstag for his legislative proposals. Bismarck accepted this limitation. Why? Because he appreciated that the Reichstag was a useful device for law and order and that the cooperation of a popularly elected body was essential for smooth running. So I was looking for something along the lines of law and order and smooth running and getting the people on side um, to run the country. Um, so you may not have got a mark for that, depending, again, there were quite a few answers that were rather vague. Question 25. In reality, though, Bismarck was only prepared to work with the Reichstag on the condition that the Reichstag accepted his legislative proposals. Question 26. What are the missing words? Um, most of you got that one right. Um, the first missing word was factionalism and the second was nation. Question 27. Why could Bismarck usually count on the support of the Reichstag? Um, it's looking for um, up to three points there. Its members had no experience of democracy. That's the first one. They believed their role was to criticise the Chancellor, but not to oppose his decisions. So criticise, but not to oppose... And thirdly, accept, accepted Bismarck's view that opposition was damaging to national unity and strength. So that sort of feeling that um, strong leadership was needed to keep the nation together. So they felt it was really was um, not really their role um, to um, challenge that unity. That was a very, very distinctive feature um, of the Reichstag in Germany. And then question 28, where in the German Empire the French-speaking people lived? That was Alsace-Lorraine. 
um, where in the German P Empire did Danish speaking people live? That was North Schleswig. Some of you lost marks there, or lost half a mark if, if, um, if the word was uh, spelt incorrectly. Question 30. Which two of the following are incorrect? So this is the flip side of the earlier question. So this is about the responsibility of the state governments. Um, the state governments were not responsible um, for foreign policy or for defence. They, they, those responsibilities were firmly with the imperial government, so foreign policy, take-out and defence. Um, and then finally 31, again the flip side of the earlier question, what type of taxation was controlled by the federal states? The answer was direct taxation. Some of you put income tax. Um, what I was actually looking for there was direct taxation because it is the... Um, I mean, that, that, was, that was basically what I was looking for. I was consistent the way I marked that across all the answers, so direct taxation. Um, that was that. Hopefully you found that useful. I'm going to put two more podcasts on. Um, the first will be on the intentionist school of thought about um, where power lay, and the second will be on the structuralist school of thought about where power lay. Um, so make sure you review those as well. Um, and remember to email me to say that you have seen all three podcasts. Thank you.